Hey, the housing market is hot and I don't have any offers yet. Why isn't my home selling? That's what this video is about and it's coming right up. Hey, welcome. I'm glad you're back. If this happens to be your first time visiting, my name is Andy Elliott. I work with DeSelms Real Estate in Williamson County, Tennessee, and we serve the Nashville area. Remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos coming along. Now let's talk about why your home isn't selling. If you've hired a realtor or are selling for sale by owner, this video applies. I really do have an answer. Watch the whole video and it's a short one and see if it makes sense to you. But let's start here. Here's a rule. Every home can be sold, period. But it's conditional on three things, price, condition, location. As I've said, every home can be sold. But let me tell you this, if a home isn't selling, it's this thing that's getting in the way. I have resisted making this video for weeks now because with this topic, the risk is high that I'm gonna piss somebody off and I don't want that. But what I've decided is, I'd rather you be angry with me over the facts than love me for a lie. If you feel like you're alone in your home not selling, you're not. I just checked the MLS in Franklin, Tennessee. There are 204 homes on the market 60 days plus. 128 homes 90 days plus. So trust me, you are not alone. So here's my take on why a home doesn't sell. Just roll with me for a minute here. It's emotions versus logic. When a realtor does comps and research on a particular property, they're looking at it from a strictly logical perspective. The market is what the market is, the numbers are what the numbers are, and the house we're trying to comp fits here. We're trying to find a sensible price, not an arbitrary one. But here's a key point. We don't have any outside forces skewing our judgment. Sellers usually have an idea on their price but their emotions get entangled in there. And emotion and logic just don't mix. They're like oil and water. If a realtor isn't careful about blending the emotions of the seller and the logic of the research, he usually ends up with the label, that guy's an idiot. Wherever you're getting your comps from, either an agent or doing your own research for for sale by owner, the following explanation, I believe, applies. I've identified at least three types of sellers, and that isn't to generalize or to stereotype, but after all these years, I've found that sellers usually fall into one of three categories that affect the list price going into the market. Seller number one, I'll get what I get. Of course this seller wants to get the most they can for their home, but they understand market forces and are willing to accept what the market offers. And no, that doesn't mean they accept lowball offers. They just understand what reasonable is and are willing to consider it. These are the seller's homes that usually sell fast and over asking price. Seller number two, I want a price X plus plus. They want a price a little bit over what the comps say just to see. And to be candid, sometimes they get it. But the key point is here, they're pushing the envelope just a little bit. They usually don't agree with what the comps say, but are willing to consider what the market offers. They know what a reasonable offer is and are willing to consider it. These are the homes that the days on market are on the higher end of the range. Seller number three, I have to have X amount of dollars, period. They draw the hard line on their list price and that's okay. They have a number in their head of what their home is worth and neither realtor nor market research usually changes that much. But these are the homes that are on the market a long time and sometimes don't sell. And it isn't until significant days on market build up that the question arises, why isn't my home selling? If you're seller number three, please know you're not being judged or scolded or anything like that. My heart goes out to seller number three because you need to get what you need to get and trying to get a home to produce a price that the market won't bear is exhausting. I've watched it more than once. Now seller number three has a few options. Number one is just stay on the market until the market rises to meet your price. 
How long will that take? Nobody knows. Number two is stay in your home. If you can't get what you need, maybe that's the best option. Number three, change something. Why have I not mentioned location and condition up to this point? And that's because price compensates for everything. If you're honestly seeking an answer and open-minded, try this. Find homes in your neighborhood at the price that you want to get and go see the under contract still showing properties. Here's what I mean. If you think your home is worth $450,000, find a home that's under contract and still showing for $450,000 and see for yourself if there isn't a difference in what you have and what they're offering. Now remember, the under contract properties won't reveal the final contract price till after closing, so be careful of that. And don't go looking for listings that are still active at your price to try to justify your own. Here's why the buyer's tour works. It gives you a buyer's eye view of the competition and what is actually selling. Usually after you tour three or four homes, it really clears things up for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's been received in the spirit in which it was given. I'm just trying to be honestly helpful. If you find value in my videos, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified of videos coming along. Talk to you soon.